So I'm making this video to tell my story because it seems like I've told it a hundred times already and I'm probably going to tell it a hundred more times or two hundred more times. So this is going to be uh, an easier way for me to tell it. Um, so it's Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday evening. Uh, on Friday morning, I was getting ready to go to work. I had a patient nearby at nine o'clock. So I was like, ooh, get to sleep in a little bit. And uh, I was getting ready for work, got in the shower. Everything was fine. I hadn't had any issues. I had no headache. I had no, you know, head trauma. There's nothing that would have indicated that I might have, have possibly have problems. Um, I was in the middle, actually, no, I was about the end of my shower. I was rinsing out the conditioner in my hair. Conditioner, that's a word I couldn't say earlier. Um, and my right arm just kind of quit working right. Um, my vision was really blurry, kind of double vision. I felt really um, kind of disassociated. Like I knew who I was and where I was. I wasn't confused at all, but it was just kind of like everything was on a delay. It was really weird. My right arm, like just, it would move, but not really when I asked it to, or any, it was just super strange. So I was, I just finished rinsing the conditioner out of my hair. I was almost done. Got out. And I tried to call for help. I tried to just say, Josh, cause I knew I needed, he needed to call 911. I couldn't do squat. Um, so I, but I tried to yell Josh and nothing came out, but, uh, like I, that's all the, that's all I could do. And I was just thinking, shit, like I can't speak. I have no words. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. If this is what I got, I'm going to use it. So I just, eh, louder until he came in and here I am standing out the shower, dripping wet, drooling on the floor, looking probably panicked as all hell. Um, and just, uh, is all I could do. And I just pointed at my arm, which was, you know, an extra limp. I made it like, oh, uh, blobby, blobby. And he just looks at me like, are you okay? And I was like, point, that's when I pointed to my arm. He says, are you having a stroke? And I was like, <laughs> he's like, I'm calling 911. So he jumped on the phone right away. And I was starting to kind of come up and feel a little better. So I dried off and, um, I went into the bathroom or into the bedroom to go get some clothes because, you know, I was able to move. So I went in, got some clothes on. Our self reception in this apartment is kind of garbage. Um, so back in the bedroom and you know bathroom where we were, uh, the self reception sucks worst. So it dropped the call to 911. So he runs to the front of the house to try again. And at that point, I started getting my language back a little bit. And, um, I knowing that people do really wild stuff, like they, they will call, uh, they'll haul themselves up the stairs or like get back in bed and their whole right side is flaccid. They're like, Oh, I'll just, I'll just sleep it off. I'll feel better in the morning. That's the worst thing you could possibly do. Don't do that. That's why I made the little PSA thing. So yeah, that's another video. Um, so I was just like, wow, I can see where this would be real tempting. So I told Josh, Hey, I'm feeling better. And he's like, I'm still calling 911, which is the right response. Uh, but it was more of a, Hey, FYI, I can talk now sort of thing. Um, so I got dressed and got on the sofa and I recorded myself actually the very, very, very first one of these. Um, it's really scary, hard to watch. Um, I'll probably wind up sharing it for people who want to see it, uh, and I'll make sure that it's got like a little warning on it because it is really difficult to to see. But it's also really interesting to see what it actually looks like when someone is in the middle of a stroke because it's not like these other videos. So it's it's difficult difficult to watch, but it's also really important. I feel so. Um, I'm gonna do a little video editing. None of these have been edited, just totally off the cuff. So I'll do a little. Uh, editing, put a little disclaimer on there and probably pop that up on my channel a little later. So anyhow, at this point, the EMTs come and I'm feeling better. Uh, I don't feel bad. My arm's still a little weird and uh, I'm st I still can't speak very well. Not as well as I am now, but far better than I had. Well, obviously something's better than nothing. So um, I was able to, able to talk to the EMTs, tell them what's going on. Uh, obviously I'm 36 so they're asking me a hundred other questions like did you have any head traumas no I just stroked I'm sorry I <laughs> can't explain it so um, we wound up going to Northwest because it was about equidistant from um, Cherry Hill and First Hill and the other level three centers uh, we were originally planning on Ballard's closest but they're only level two I found out they don't even have a haven't even have an ICU anymore. So, um, yeah, scrap that. So we went to Northwest. They were wonderful. there. really, really great. I, I, I really liked the care I got there. The doctors were wonderful. Um, all the staff, the nurses, NACs, my phlebotomist was rad. Oh, he was great. So, um, anyhow, so we go to the ER 
And as I'm in the ambulance, I'm starting to lose my language again. So it comes and goes, and that's where you have to be really worried about, you know, going back to bed or waiting it out. It's usually not getting better. And even if it is, you still need to get worked up to figure out what's going on. So in the ambulance, I start losing more and more in my language. And by the time I get to the ER, I'm operating on very, very little. You know, they say, you know, they show me words. They say tip top. And I'm like, tip top. I could get sort of some of it out, but not really much. So um, as I'm progressing there, they send me the CT scan. CT comes back with nothing. And at that point, I actually had um, different earrings and I had double flared plugs. So they're fat in the front, and fat in the back. You kind of got pop them through usually after a shower maybe a little um coconut oil or something to help ease them in once they're in then you're good to go but i didn't have that and obviously i was out of the shower recently but i was not thinking about my earring and jewelry so i just yanked them out and i didn't get to do it gracefully or with any preparation so they started to bleed so um i get back to the er and uh, at this point um i had no language at all uh, and I, I could see that Josh was having a hard time, so I wanted to have someone come and help him out. So I was like, text Jamie, but I can't say text Jamie, have her come and help, because I can't say squat. So I wound up doing this ridiculous grab my pants, because she has similar pants, and then did a little shimmy, because she's my dance sister, and eventually he got it through that I wanted him to call, text uh, Jamie. So she was there to kind of help him out and help me out, because I couldn't help. Um, it was a mess, so uh, I went back to his another CT scan um, with contrast this time, but it took a little while to get those results back. After the second CT scan, that's when they gave me the TPA. That's the thing that saved my bacon. Good stuff, that. But it's an anticoagulant, a really big one. So remember the bleeding ears, I think? Well, they start bleeding initially, but because that drug is so powerful and it's sole purpose is to break up clots it undid all the hard work I'd done on my ears to seal those off again so I started bleeding from the ears but it was most importantly doing its work up in my brain so it busted up that clot so by the time I went up to the MRI scan where they actually saw the signs of the stroke that that picture with the little tiny white marble in the corner of that that right side that little white spot was the effects of the stroke that was affecting my speech at that point, I had the TPA. It was starting to break up the clot, but I was still showing symptoms. That's where I had my facial droop. I actually got that, you know, droopy one side, and I'd stick my tongue out and it'd go over here instead of out the front, um, which I, it was weird because I felt normal. I felt like I was doing the thing, and everyone's looking at me like, she's not doing the thing. It's weird. It's not doing the thing. It's doing the broken thing. So their faces were all kind of freaking me out. Um... That was when I had, that was when I had, like, really the, the most emotional time of this whole thing. I, I was really scared, and I started breaking down and crying, and because I had no words, my crying sounded awful. It was just this, <gasps> it was the, the worst, worst noise I've ever heard myself make in my life, and it's really hard even now to think about how scary that was. Of course, that made Josh cry. Josh crying made me cry more, which made me make the stupid noise more. <laughs> the poor neurologist was there like, it's okay, it's okay, trying to rub my shoulders. She's like, you can't cry anymore because your blood pressure is going to go too high. We need your blood pressure, blood pressure to come down. Um, I guess at the top, uh, my systolic was up in the 190s. Uh, as my body is trying to basically pressurize and blow past that clot, or at least get the blood past the clot to my brain. So my body's kind of stupid, but it's also really smart at the same time. That's When that's all its tools it has, it's actually pretty pretty decent. But with the TPA, we don't my, want my blood pressure that high anymore. So, um, so at that point, they figured out I do have a stroke. They transferred me to the ICU, and I was on very strict 24-hour bed rest. The idea being that with this TPA in my system, anything, I bump, I sneeze wrong, you know, if, if I fall, I could bleed out because even just a bruise is not going to clot. It's just going to keep going and going and going and going and going. So I had to use a bedpan. That sucked. I'm like, the commode's just right over there. I see it. I see it. I promise I'll be good. No, doesn't matter. Bedpan it is. So at one point I wound up holding it for like 12 hours because I didn't want to be a bother. But I couldn't eat anything either because I couldn't get the speech therapist. So no eating, no drinking all day Saturday. 
Uh, Friday night was tough because I was on a 15 minute neuro checks where they ask you where you are and all that stuff. And as my speech is slowly coming back and staying this time, um, I had difficulty saying Northwest Hospital. It was Northwest Hospital <laughs> for quite a while, but they could tell I knew where it was. Um, so getting all that stuff every 15 minutes and then that decreased to half an hour and then that decreased to every hour. Uh, my night shift, night shift nurse was gracious enough to give me a pass on a couple of them because I was sleeping so soundly. Finally managed to get asleep. Don't wake her up. So um, after we got some, so a little bit of answers, we did a, um, a cardiogram. So just, you know, basically ultrasound through my chest. Uh, through my chest and also on kind of on my side under my boob and leaning on my side and then they pushed bubbles uh, in through my IV and they watch where the bubbles went seeing if those little sneaky bubbles would pop over to the other atrium um, and it was negative they all went where they're supposed to go um, so that was kind of weird and disappointing but that's the one that has only 60 percent if you've got that little pfo that little hole in between uh, your atria and your heart it only catches at 60 percent of the time and of course i'm a 40 percent i'm not going to do things the easy way um so the next day that's when they said we're going to do the transesophageal echocardiogram where they go down your throat and look from your throat into the back of your heart and that's like more of a 90% success rate. That's where they saw that little hole. Not a very big one, but where it is and how it's shaped, there's basically a little flap. It's, it's kind of loose and floppy, and that gives the clot something to adhere to and actually form from. So it wasn't that the clot went through the hole. It sounds like a clot was likely more generated by the hole. So keeping in mind this hole is in like 20 to 25% of the population, like the people in the office, my friends... Like, in a bunch of you have one of these. You just don't know because it doesn't cause problems. Don't freak out. Uh, but I, they're testing still. We haven't heard back if I have a genetic clotting uh, disorder or anything like that. My cholesterol levels were all good. I mean, not, like, stellar, but good. Uh, my HDL, LDL ratio was good. Um, my triglycerides were a little high, but nothing that would indicate a big clotting issue. Um, I do have my birth control, which has the... Um, uh, estrogen in it, which is one of those things that does produce clots, so we had to eliminate that, go with a progestin only one. Um, so we're still kind of problem solving that piece of the puzzle. So um, yeah, the TEE was done on Sunday, on my last day, and then at that point they said, you know, we've done all the stuff, we've done all the tests, you're stable, you're doing fine, you're heading on the right road, and at that point that's when they sent me home because there was really no reason to stay in the hospital anymore. They'd done all the hospital tests they need to. So last things here is just trying to figure out what it is exactly that caused this. Um, currently I'm on aspirin. I'll probably be on aspirin for probably the rest of my life. Uh, I'm on a um, cholesterol medication now too because even though my levels are good we need them to be great so we're going to bring those suckers down to the golden range I don't know what target it is but hopefully we can decrease that a little bit later too so that with my uh, my gut pills now I went from zero meds or one med but uh, it wasn't really an issue one uh, to needing a pill met a mediset pill minder so now I can give all my patients crap when they're like oh I could do it and like mm -mm, mm -mm, I got a mediset I got a better set, you get a better set. We're not perfect, and the problem with forgetting is you don't remember. That's the definition. So get your Medi set, make sure you take your pills on time, because this stuff's important. Um, this wasn't fun. Uh, it scared the shit out of me. I know it scared the shit out of Josh. I know it scared the shit out of a bunch of my friends. Um, all around not fun. Um, we're through the, th through the thick of it now. I just need to work on my speech some more. Uh, I'm mostly there. Um, phone calls are hard. Um, and I still have to concentrate more and focus on my words and slow down, which is stupid and I hate it and it's not me, but it helps when I get stuck. So anyhow, uh, again, I love all the support that I've had from everybody. Um, I really love hearing from everyone and we'll be around the rest of the week. And, uh, so feel free to stop by, ping me, I'll give you my address, um, we're trying to get out and start doing a little more walking around the neighborhood, so definitely let us know before you come over. Make sure we're not like at Green Lake trying to go around the lake. Uh, so hopefully next week I'll be going back to work. Um, again, thank you all for your love and support.